All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to session 10 of Star Trek Matahari. For those who are unfamiliar, uh, Matahari is a tabletop role playing game that uses the Star Trek Adventures rule set. Uh, we are set in the year 2412, well, now 2413, uh, aboard an Eclipse class in the Shackleton Expanse. What this means is that we're in the same canon as uh, Fenrir, Groundskeepers, and uh, my October games. Now, you don't need to have watched any of those other games to enjoy this one, but you're going to get a few nods and references if you do. Uh, if you want to play catch up, you can play or you can catch the VODs uh, for all of my games on YouTube and most of the popular podcast solutions. Uh, let's see. Announcement wise, I don't think I have much to say this week other than uh, Extra Life is ending next Saturday. Um, we've, of course, already hit like quintuple or no septuple my initial goal, which I do want to say thank you, everybody, for uh, contributing to supporting the kids. Uh, but if you want to donate more, you're interested in that sort of thing, uh, there should be links below the stream uh, about how you can donate to Extra Life. Uh, but with that said, uh, let's just go around and have everyone introduce themselves because we have some new faces tonight. So starting with the captain. Hello, everyone. Uh, I am Dare Wolf. I am playing Captain Frederick O'Connor. Always a pleasure to be here. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Nikhil. I'm uh, the first officer, Commander Jaro. Uh, happy to be here, too. And then, Liab, I think you're next. Oh, okay. Hi. Um, I'm AKA Xavier Galaxy on the Twitch and all the other things. Uh, my real name is Xavier as well. And I am playing Ensign Udin Leob, the new addition to the Marahari. Hey everyone, I'm Alex. I'm playing Lieutenant Commander Prawl, the ship's intelligence officer. Yeah, hello, I'm uh, Lieutenant Davi. I'm the security officer. I'm new, and I'm from uh, the Fenrir. And uh, I think I'm here because the Commodore is punishing me. <laughs> I'm Brian, at MindOverBrian on Twitter and Twitch. Uh, and I'm playing uh, Commander Jamar Tholayap, the chief engineer and second officer of the Matahari. And of course, uh, I am ELH, and uh, I'm going to be your game master for the evening. But with that said, let's go ahead and run our introduction. Uh And of course, you know, what has to happen the moment when I, you know, cut to introduction video, we get a raid. Uh, hi, Raiders. Hopefully, uh, Irie's stream was nice. Uh, I'll shout out Irie's channel in a moment. But uh, what I usually do for Star Trek Adventures is I have one of the players do an opening log. Captain, that's you today. Excellent. <clears throat> Captain's log, Stardate 90672.1. I'm hesitant to admit that the last few weeks have been somewhat, well, boring. Everything has been very quiet since our discovery of the second tachyon black hole. It's very quiet. One might even say too quiet. Ah, knock on the old uh, proverbial wood on that one. The crew also seems somewhat restless. The most exciting thing to happen has been a rogue EPS conduit on deck eight. It was all the talk in the mess hall for three whole days. Bets were taken to see how long it would take to fix and who would track down the cause. 
as was to be expected, second officer to lay up both identified and solve the problem. And by product, I, uh, I also want a full week's holodeck time that I divided among the senior staff. They seemed rather appreciative of that. Jarrell has even been getting very competent at my golf program. I think he's been sneaking some extra green time with Mr. Woods. Exactly the kind of thing uh, uh, one would like to see out of a first officer, initiative. Aside from the slowness of the past few weeks, uh, we did have a personal personnel change. Jensen was asked by command to take a permanent position in research aboard Deep Space August. I'll admit I'm going to miss him. His expertise on the phenomena has been invaluable and his calm persona during the countless meetings and, and get togethers, I would say it was a sense of stability that I, I've come to rely on. I was very glad to have him around for the past year. Good news is we shall return to the station from time to time, so he will not be far. We also have two new officers that have taken some time to get to know, Lieutenant Tavi more than Ensign Leob. Tavi has shown himself to be extremely, extremely proficient, almost to such an extreme that was he not the way he is, I would assume him a Vulcan, without meeting him, that is, now that I've met him anyway. Not a bad thing by any means, but I somehow can't feel that maybe he got put on the wrong ship or is maybe even being punished with all the strangeness that seems to, we, well, we run into. I will say that his uh, proclivity for jokes is also refreshing. As for the young ensign, I've not had much time to get to know him. He's been well preoccupied. I invited him to several times to the holodeck to meet and greet, yet he was always, sorry, Captain, I'm indisposed and have something to do with the sensors and stellar phenomena, et cetera, et cetera. I can't help but also appreciate his dedication to his new position, but come on, lad, meet your captain. This morning, I'm actually meeting with Prawl to discuss new information he's discovered about the backlash from us shunting a singularity containing an omega particle into fluidic space. I assume you will only have good news to share with me and log. All right. And you, of course, may have one momentum for doing the log. So uh, as the captain has alluded to, we are going to start today's session uh, in the captain's ready room where Prawl and O'Connor, you guys are um, having a chat over, uh, well, I guess it's coffee or tea. I don't think we've ever had that debate, but take tea. it away. Always tea. So... Oh, good morning, Prawl. How did you enjoy your extra holodeck time? Very enlightening. I've been participating in a couple, I guess you would call them ancient earth documentaries. Some Bond character. Not familiar with this series. You'll have to uh, send me the uh, send me the holo link. I'll happy to look at it. Uh, I'll be sure to do that. Um... I think I'm on the fourth or fifth story in the line so far. It's been entertaining. Excellent. Well, I didn't just uh, call you here to talk uh, personal things. What can you tell me about what transpired with Ludic Space? Quite frankly, nothing good. There has been no news whatsoever. <sighs> I'm almost more nervous to hear that there was no news rather than bad news. No news is likely the worst news that we could be getting. Have you heard nothing, uh, neither from the Starfleet Command or your contacts? I have heard absolutely nothing. The fact that we shunted this into fluidic space and it seems to have just disappeared, it raises some concerns. I would agree with that. I would indeed agree with that. May I ask you a favor? I think you would ask anyways. <laughs> indeed I would. I'd like you to keep a closer eye on Tatiana. There's just something that is not set well with me after she made the suggestion to do what we did. I realize our options were limited, but we still know so little about her and her intentions. Also, we know so little about what happens in fluidic space. Just do your best and let me know if you see anything strange. Fair? That yeah, is fair enough. I'll keep my eye out to see what happens. Very good. The, well, please. The biggest concern I have, the fact that we've heard nothing we essentially gave them a very strong weapon that if they figure it out could 
be very cataclysmic. Well, at this point, there's nothing we can do about it. Unless you have anything else to add, I'm going to head to the bridge. No, sir, I don't. Well, as always, a pleasure. And I uh, exit off to, uh, out to the bridge. Okay. Well, right before you exit onto the bridge, I did want to give our uh, new players a, a little bit of a chance to banter with the other ones. So uh, I'll describe it since Tavian, uh, is it Leob, Leob? How should I be saying it? Leob. Leob, okay. So Leob and Tavi, uh, since this is your first time actually in the CIC, um, the best way I can sort of describe it is uh, it's a wide open area with a hollow table in the center of the space. And all around this table are raised sort of platforms where the actual uh, stations are located. Um, to the sort of north on this map, uh, or I guess sort of right behind where the captain would normally sit, uh, there is the navigation consoles. To the right, uh, near sort of the east side of this map, you have the ops station where Commander Toleip is already seated. Uh, to the left, you have the raised platform where tactical and comms are located. Tavi, you're seated there. And then, uh, Liab, you are down in the quote-unquote science pit. Uh, which is uh, just a just not like down down, but like a few steps down from normal level, um, which is actually kind of interesting because it gives you the impression that everybody else is above you, which you don't know if that's by design or if the one engineer behind this design was you know just having fun at blue uniform expenses. <laughs> but uh, I did want to give you guys a moment to sort of interact. Uh, so Jaro, you're there. You're currently seated in the captain's chair. Again, to lay up your ops, Tavi, you're at your station, Liab, you're at yours. And if it matters, Ensign Raven is ever present at her station. Does anything has, please tell me that all of our missions haven't been like this. Uh, it's usually a lot more stressful around here, honestly. <laughs> because there's, I'm, I've done diagnostics on the sensors three times. I've reconfigured the shield overlays five times. When is there a thing? When are we doing a thing? Believe me, almost every single encounter we've had deals with some never before seen scientific phenomenon in which I'm useless at uh, addressing. So don't worry, I'll have plenty of work for you. Well, I am useful yeah. at that. So I'm just, yes, please, like bring on, bring on the phenomena or phenomenon, um, whatever, singular or plural, uh, Commander. Uh, I phenomena. just say, uh, be careful what you wish for, right, Delayup? Absolutely, Commander. <laughs> right. We'll come to regret those words, Ensign. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Freddie, foreshadowing. You know, it's always one of those things where if you ask too much for something, you're going to get something and you're just not going to like it. You know, just uh, enjoy the cheese you have and don't dream about the cheese that's still out there to be gotten. Is, uh, is that an ancient proverb from your world, Lieutenant? I'm from Earth. <laughs> Is it an ancient Earth proverb? Ah, uh, don't think so. Ah, well, we have an aphorist on board now. Uh, I, I should just recalibrate the sensors again. <laughs> Ensign, if you recalibrate those sensors one more time, my engineering crew is going to have your head. So leave the sensors alone. Okay, okay. No more, no more recalibrations. Maybe, I'll just. Maybe, Maybe just run diagnostic or oh. or or do actual sensor sweep, collect data, do science things. Commander, I miss Jensen. <laughs> you know, if you recalibrate those sensors again, at least you'll have something exciting to handle. I'm going to do a diagnostic now. <laughs> And now's right about when uh, O'Connor and Prawl, you guys sort of step onto the bridge. Captain on the bridge. At ease, Ensign. At ease. Jaro, status report. Anything 
2 report? Uh, surprisingly, no. It's uh, still pretty quiet. Uh, you know, Ensign Layob is uh, kind of going crazy over there. He says his, the ship is not exciting enough for him. On the and bright side, the senses are calibrated. <laughs> so I hear. Layob, if you could do me a favor, I'd like you to do a long-range sensor sweep, th- sensor sweep, 360 degrees around the ship. Just see if you see anything. Uh, yes, Captain. All right. So oh, I'd like you to roll idea. me. I'm keeping busy. I'd like you to roll me a uh, reason science, and if someone can get the Matahari's sensors science, uh, this is going to be at a difficulty of two. Uh, after accounting for your advanced sensor suites. Excellent. All right, well, there's the uh, two you need. So, Ensign, it's one of those things where, you know, you do the sensor sweep, and initially it doesn't look like anything. You're starting to, like, already formulate the words, maybe the, oh, God, Captain, there's still just nothing out there. (laughs) When right as you're about to speak, there's this tiny little blip of data. It's not much, but what you are seeing is there is something metallic nearby what might be a rogue planet. Oh, every time we do... Oh, okay. Uh, Captain? Yes, Sensen? I'm reading a metallic object on sensors uh, trying to triangulate distance but it looks it looks like it could be a rogue planet fantastic news zero on it get as much data as we can helm set a course hi sir um i'm seeing it now how fast do you want to get there just get us there quick i sir your better warp 9.975 let's go <laughs> looks like the vacation is over Oh, I love it. All right, so uh, I'm going to actually put you guys on this map, and then I'm going to describe what you're actually seeing. All right, so the Matahari sort of comes out of warp, and you do indeed arrive outside what is essentially a rogue planet. Now, the rogue planet is, of course, dark because there's no sun to illuminate it. Um, So just imagine the actual planet below that you're seeing on this map. Just imagine it to be darker than it actually is. Um, But what's important here is not so much the rogue planet as it is the debris field that surrounds it. And what you're seeing is that there was probably at one point some form of space station or giant spacecraft that has been shattered Uh, torn apart and otherwise left adrift in the gravity well of this rogue planet. Uh, Just to sort of help with questions here, the structure or what remains of it does not match any known designs on record. Uh, You are not reading any life signs and your sensors are having difficulty penetrating the hull of whatever this structure is. Uh, What else do I have to tell you? Oh, yes. Uh, There is also a strange repeating signal that the Universal Translator has not been able to, well, translate yet. I'd like to try to analyze that that repeating signal uh, using my linguistics focus. Okay. Uh, Let's have you do a control and a science. Uh, I'll even give you an assist with the Matahari. Give me a computers and science from the Matahari. Difficulty of two. Oh, well, very Ooh. nice start. Already two successes. Okay, Captain, I'm trying to analyze this signal. Uh, wait one. Very good, Anson. Right. So initially I was going to do some fancy voice modding things, but I was peaking on audio and I'll have to fix it later. So just imagine the sound of static and the sound of like audio glitches as uh, the Ensign puts it on the uh, speakers of the CIC. And through the static, through the haze, you all think you hear the word help. Just the single word, just help. Did everyone else hear that? I heard help. Yes, sir. Yep. Can you, uh, sorry, could you determine whether that is a contemporaneous message or if it's a recording? Uh, Working. 
And uh, what I would say, since you are the science officer, you could just use your free question on that. Yeah. Is that a, is that a long ago recording or is that a, a contemporary what I would say is that the initial start of this signal, based on what you're seeing, uh, it's hard to get a full reading on it, but your best guess is maybe within the last six months. Mm. Yeah, Somewhere in the last six months, sir. I, I, I can't tell you anything more than that. Thanks. Not without, not without finding the origin of the signal. Prawl, does this structure have any similarities to the Dyson sphere that we ran into? From outward appearance, I don't see any similarities. Nothing on, nothing in the computer about anything similar to this, anything we can find? Jaro, thoughts? Six, six months is a long time, but it's possible that whoever was requesting for help is still there. It's also possible that they're long dead or that this is some kind of trap. How and massive is the, like, is this planet? Are we talking like Earth size, ELH? Are we talking? Yeah, I knew I forgot something. So okay. the planet itself is actually about Mars size. So almost okay. Earth size, but just a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. At least if I remember Earth to Mars ratio anyway. The debris um, field, does it surround the entire planet? Is yes. it just more of, okay. So it's like yeah. something was surrounding this planet. That or something was being sort of in orbit of the planet. And when mm -hmm. it shattered, it sort of spread the debris naturally in the orbit. Okay. Um, but sense. the structure itself, or at least the largest part of the structure where the signal is coming from, mm -hmm. that is more or less on the scale of a star base, like a Federation star base. Mm -hmm. So Sort of to give a scale reference, um, the Matahari is a scale five. Mm -hmm. At least I think you're a five. Uh, mm -hmm. A Sovereign is scale six. This mm -hmm. is more like a scale eight or scale nine. Okay. Makes sense. Tactical, I'd like to tractor in a piece of the debris field just to see if we can analyze it. And then sensors, see if you can isolate exactly where the signal is originating from. Jero, I, I think you might be going on an away mission. I'll uh, get ready to go, but um, let's see what uh, let's see what our scans turn up first. I agree. All right. Well, let's start uh, order of operation here. Let's actually do that tractor beam task. So, Tavi, I need you to roll me as soon as I find it here. Here it is. I need you to roll me a control and a security, and the ship will assist you with a structure security. The difficulty here will be a two. And for reasons that may or may not become apparent based on your rolls, uh, the complication range on this is going to be a 17 to 20. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm going to spend that one moment that we have. I'm cool with that. I'm greedy. I mean, it wouldn't be a John character if you didn't spend every momentum that because we ever had. Because you're so, John. Yeah. And uh, I'm assuming my uh, focus of uh, Starship weapon systems will work. Yeah, yeah. The track beam is technically a weapon, so yeah. Well, thank you very much for your kind adjudication. Okay, Ooh, hey, that's, uh, Tavi, that's, let's go. That's five successes <laughs> before the ship. Uh, the ship, again, is a uh, structure security, if someone can grab that. All right. I'd like to say okay. I had no complications. <laughs> oh, okay, hey, that's six successes, which means you uh, get four momentum. And yeah, Tavi, how big a chunk you want to bring in? About the size of a shuttle. Okay. Oh. Let me clarify that just a little bit. Do you mean like a standard Type 5 shuttle, which is more or less like car-sized in real life? Okay. Or do you mean... Uh, about the size of a New York taxi cab. Does that help? That helps a lot, yeah. So you bring in this chunk, uh, we'll say into Cargo Bay 3, and uh, immediately what happens is the person in charge of Cargo Bay 3 says, or at least calls up to the bridge and says, um... Sir, 
what did you just bring into my cargo bay? It's a chunk of debris from a, a field that we're analyzing right now uh, to lay up. Uh, uh, sir, I don't mean to interrupt, but I'm sorry, debris? Yes, debris. Why? I don't know whether to tell you to come down and see yourself or if I should pipe the image up to you all. Well, it's been somewhat boring. I'll be down there in a moment. Uh, to lay up. Okay. And uh, let's see here. Uh, what's your what's a uh, layup? Sorry, new guy. <laughs> layup with me. Uh, yes, sir. All right. You so, know, the uh, captain, when examining odd phenomenon that have been brought upon the ship, uh, I mean, it's pretty standard that you have a security compliment with you. It was implied that you were coming too. Come on, Tavi. Oh, are we bringing oh, yeah. Tavi? Because he is much slower than the rest of us due to his tiny legs. You know, I'm pretty fast and screw you. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Right. So we're actually going to go a little bit theater of the mind here because I just couldn't find a nice cargo bay map. But uh, when you arrive in the cargo bay, you know, it's your standard Starfleet flair where you've got uh, some miscellaneous boxes and crates full of who knows what. But in the middle of the cargo bay, uh, sort of standing across from where it was brought in. So there's a force field up right now. Um, what you were expecting to be debris is a vintage hot dog stand of Earth style. And when I say vintage, I mean old as hell, but it looks immaculate. In fact, you start to smell as if the hot dogs in the stand are edible, like they're freshly cooked. And uh, the cargo bay administrator, uh, a, uh, a bullion... Uh, his name is uh, Ensign Jefferson. Uh, Ensign Jefferson just sort of looks at you and says, uh, "Yeah, sir. Uh, as you can see, we that that doesn't look like debris to me." I can see that. Thank you. What is that smell? Uh, permission to eat a hot dog, sir. <laughs> Granted. You're going to eat what? a dog. <laughs> oh, Leo, yeah. do me a favor and scan this stand for tachyon emissions. Uh, yeah, yes, sir. All right. So, Tavi, I do have to ask, all the trimmings? Chili? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, we... Uh, as, Except uh, cream cheese. Only barbarians put cream cheese on hot dogs. Insight and science? Yeah, I would say insight and science would be a good role for here. And uh, yeah. as you're doing that, of course, Tavi is, uh, you know, loading up on the condiments and uh, making a uh, real good dog. Now, it's pretty clear that in the history of spatial anomalies, we probably haven't seen a hot dog stand, but I'm still going to pitch using history of spatial anomalies as a focus. I'll give it to you, sure. <laughs> oh, interesting. So uh, we're going to keep that complication. Difficulty was only one, so you're going to pass, but we're going to keep that complication. So... Uh, what happens is you sort of scan the hot dog stand and you're not detecting any tachyon emissions. The only emissions you're detecting are, uh, heat transmission from where the hot dogs, quote unquote, are being kept. The complication is that as Tavi goes in to get the ketchup, there is a very loud, as in everybody hears it, a loud click sound right before Tavi picks up the ketchup bottle. Tavi, get away from that ketchup bottle! Oh, that can't be good. So the question is, do you actually, like, release the ketchup bottle and just jump back? Do you continue to pick it up, or do you just sort of freeze in place there, Tavi? Uh, I'm gonna freeze in place. Are we talking click like stepped on a landmine click? Some similar click, yeah. Uh, in which case, I immediately whip out a tricorder and like make my way over. All right. I'd like you to roll me a uh, insight engineering difficulty of one. Also, I do apologize. Apparently, my neighbors are throwing a party outside, which is a stupid idea, but they're doing it anyway. 
I can't uh, hear anything. Listen, I, I'm not going to say that I've studied uh, hot dog carts, but I do have a focus in ground vehicles. <laughs> I'll give it to you, sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you get the one success. Uh, you want the good news or the bad news? Uh, let's start with the good news. Well, the good news is that's going to be a really good hot dog. Is the bad news that it's going to be his last? No, the bad news is that the click is just the heating element underneath the ketchup is broken. Oh. All right, Mr. Tavi, you can proceed with your hot dog. Uh, however, oh, the, cart, the cart is broken. No more heat, apparently. Well, Except from the jalapenos. Hot dog. Yeah, it's, it's good hot dog. If uh, if you had been injured, I would have given you stress back. But um, yeah, just a really good hot dog. Hey, so you know, Ensign... this is a good this is a good kosher dog. Ensign Leo is just one. sort of looking around the bay and watching all of this and going. And then finally, ex I exclaim, "Does anybody else think it's weird? We found a hot dog cart in space." I mean, where else would you expect to find the hot dog cart? Would anywhere depends? else. Literally anywhere else. Uh, Commander. Captain to the bridge. Commander Gerard here. This is going to be a very strange request, but can you have science scan for Earth vehicles from the late 20s of Earth history, 1920s? Um, that is a pretty strange request, but yes, I can do that. I think uh, you would, and... I can uh, reroute my panel down to the cargo bay here. Sure. And yeah, uh, what I would say is that no rule required. No, only thing you're seeing out there is more of that strange debris that you're not able to get, you know, past the surface of. Thing. You know, we were on the Fenrir and uh, we came across a vintage uh, wet floor sign. Huh. Fascinating story, Mr. Tavi. Captain, if we want to get closer to the uh, station or what's left of it, I recommend we intensify our nano ionic distortion array, thus keeping the debris from striking even the shields. Agreed. At this point, I think the best thing to do is to explore. I believe you said something, Ensign, about being bored. Why don't you go on this away mission with Jaro and... Uh... Let's see here. Tavi, I want you to go as well. And then to lay up. You, you too. Computer Thank and you. program. No? <laughs> no arch. No. no holodeck. Nothing. All right. Uh, yes, Captain. Very good. And then uh, I'll return to the bridge and let Joe know what's going on and send, get close to the station and let's, let's have an away mission. All right, so let me make sure I have everybody from the away mission correctly. I have Jaro, of course, leading it. Uh, I have Tuleip. I have our new science officer. I have Tavi. Uh, who am I missing? Permission to take uh, um, uh, Radish as well. Yeah. Uh, I could use the additional security backup in case things go haywire. Danny Bradish, you're ready to go. All right. And then, Commander, Aprol, are you coming as yourself or someone else? I'll go as myself. Go as yourself. All right. So, uh, simply to uh, not save on time, but to uh, get you to the really good parts, uh, the Matahari sort of closes in on what could be a airlock uh, of the station, or at least based on your scans, it looks like an airlock. And the, uh, the pilot, Ensign Raven, sort of does one of those maneuvers where... If you were to look at it from an objective perspective, the Matahari almost like jackknifes in space so that it's sort of floating next to this airlock. But of course, inertial dampeners and technology being what it is, it, you don't even notice. Uh, but as the away team gets in environmental suits, suits up, and uh, steps out of the uh, preparation bay and into the, the own airlock of the Matahari, when the exterior door opens, what you see is the following, and I'll put you on this map and explain further. So what you're seeing is that instead of the airlock you were expecting, uh, what you're seeing is more or less a round, almost perfectly, a perfectly round hole that has been 
melted, disintegrated, bored through the hull of this station. And what you can see uh, based on your uh, EV suits lights that are in your helmets and on your wrists, uh, what you're seeing is a bunch of sheared metal, uh, bits of debris, bits of flotsam, uh, not really any sort of uh, sign of life or really anything that would indicate why there was a hot dog stand out here at all. Uh, if anything, the debris and everything else that's floating around is distinctly alien. I'll scan for a weapon uh, uh, residue uh, on that uh, shear in the wall. All right. Uh, let's have you do an insight security. Actually, it might be one of those things where Tavi does it and you assist him, or yeah, I'll let you guys figure that out. Um, whatever it is, it's going to be an insight security. The difficulty here will be a three. Sir, do you know uh, what those, uh, what kind of weapon would create this kind of damage? I haven't seen anything. I haven't seen anything like this. Um, I think, um, you know, uh, Brawl, could you help the Enzin run a uh, run a scan here? Yes, sir. I can. Right. Again, that is uh, insight security for whoever's assisting, but you only get the one assist. And some momentum. Like at least one. Whoever's rolling. Okay. Um, I, so uh, am I doing the check? I think Prowl should lead the check and yeah. uh, you you should assist. Great. I am going to spend one point for another die. Okay. Well, would investigation count for a focus? Most definitely it would. Wow. Wow, that is, uh, that's five successes already. Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> Going to be a very successful night. All right, so just the five successes, but hey, that's two more momentum for you. You're pretty sure of two things, Prawl. The first is that this was not from the exterior. As in, whatever weapon caused this, it came from the interior out. The other thing that you're pretty sure of is that this isn't anything like a phaser, a disruptor, or any sort of weapon you're familiar with. It's too clean. Like, phasers are... Not that phasers and disruptors aren't clean to begin with, but this is almost down to a micron... Or not a micron, a subatomic level it's too clean uh, this doesn't make any sense commander the blast pattern the debris pattern whatever created this whole came from the interior i don't know what caused this are you saying that the weaponry used here is way more advanced than anything that we have? I don't even know if this is a weapon that caused this. I don't know what did this. Mm. Ooh, a mystery. Well, now that we're closer, um, ends in layoff, do you think that you could better triangulate the location of the distress signal? Uh, led, I'm certainly willing to try, sir. All right. Commander, should we perhaps step aboard the station? If if you think it's wise, um, I would uh, I would like to just take a second to um, see if we can get more detailed scans on the distress signal before we open up. Uh, Ensign Leo to the Matahari. You're still standing aboard her, sir. Yeah, to the bridge. This is the captain. I want to try to triangulate my position to the center of the Matahari sensor positions to try to get a better head on the signal itself. Seems like a logical choice, Ensign. Make it so. And yeah, no so role like... required. Just sort of okay. happens. Great. All right. All right. I, I have a better. I got. I, I. I have an idea where we need to go, sir. All right. 
I say, uh, I say we, we head in. Commander, may I make a suggestion? Yep. Perhaps we all engage our micro tethers, tether ourselves to the ship. That way, in, in case of emergency, the ship can pull us back. Good idea. Uh, I wouldn't want us to be trapped in there with no way of escape. Very well. All right. So again, we sort of have a little narrative sequence where uh, you all engage your micro tethers and uh, it's more or less secure it to the Matahari side of the airlock. And then almost uh, in a ballet like fashion, uh, you guys sort of push off into the weightlessness of space and float across and through this hole into the uh, interior of the structure. And it's one of those things that the moment you cross that circular threshold, you actually don't even have to engage your boots, uh, uh, the metallic uh, attractors, the, the magnet boots, thank you. You don't actually have to engage those the moment you cross that threshold, uh, about moon gravity kicks in. So not Earth gravity, but moonish gravity. So it's one of those things where you just slowly go to the deck plate. However, as everybody comes over, I'm going to spend two threat because I and what this two threat's going to do is I need everybody to roll me a fitness and a security of one. We're looking to roll one success or that everybody the... needs to get at least one here. And if you have survival as a focus, now would be a very good time for that to apply. Oh. I have it. This guy. I got one. I'm I'm seeing uh, some sucks. Let's see. So, Prawl, you actually have uh, two float. You guys are capped on momentum. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's every. Am I missing someone? Fitness and security. Yeah. Fitness, security. And you have so much floating. Okay. Yeah. You guys have. You're fine. Uh, Can I spend (laughs) some of that floating momentum to have Bradish and Tavi have type three phasers? Sure. There you go. You now have yeah. type three phasers. There you go. All right. So it's one of those things where, again, you guys just sort of settle down and uh, nothing happens since you passed your task. You're, you guys are more than fine. Uh, however, uh, one thing that you do notice now that you're on this side of the threshold is that there is some writing in an unknown alien script uh, above the circular aperture. I will try to translate uh, to try to figure out the um, linguistic roots. Maybe okay. not e- get an exact translation, but maybe figure out what we're looking at. All right. Uh, let's. This is going to be difficult. I will tell you that much. Why don't you do a? Let's call this a reason science. Again, okay. your linguistics would apply. Uh, I'm going to say the difficulty on this is a four. Science. Uh, and you how are we... capped on momentum right now. Yeah, I was going to say, are we okay with me getting a couple of extra dice here with some I think momentum? We have a couple floating, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. And well, the one. floating's already passed. Like oh, the, it's gone. The okay, yeah. gone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. At least spend one momentum. We have five right now. We should, and Yeah, just spend one momentum. Perfect. We should, in theory, have six. If you spend three, you can get two dice. Yeah, do it. All right. So 4d20. Let's roll. <laughs> get it because uh, okay and <laughs> hey there is your hey. four successes that you need so because you passed you get a full translation of uh what's above that door it literally says leave now uh sir uh this scrawl says that we should leave uh and it's it's saying we should leave now Perhaps it is a. This is the way that this race represented the exit. This was a door that was already in the. Are you saying this is an emergency exit sign, sir? Does Certainly it, possible. Does it look like it's scrawled? When you said scrawled on, do you mean does it look like it was just part of the ship, or does it look like somebody like scratched it in? As in, somebody probably took some form of crimson liquid and. Hand wrote it. This is handwritten, sir, with some kind of liquid. Um, I'm. It, it looks like script. Um, I can try to figure out what it was written in. Uh, considering it's red, I'm hoping it's not some kind of species blood. Can we detect any life signs now that we're in interior of the station? I was waiting to see if somebody would ask that. 
Yes, you are detecting life signs. Do you want to know how many? I yes, but not really. really want to know how yep. many. Let's just say that if the Matahari holds about a thousand, there's about twenty thousand on this thing. Oh. And uh, I'm going to spend I'm two nervous. threat. That two of the larger life signs are approaching your position at a rapid rate. Lieutenant, I'm no I'm no coward, but I don't like being here right now. This feels wrong. There's, let me let me try to scan what this is. And I, I do want to try to figure out what the liquid is. Again, science officer oh. free question. Great. It's I'll human it. blood. Sir, this is human blood. All right. Everyone back up to secure the entrance. Uh, Davi, Radish, I want you to be ready. Uh, there's two life forms approaching us. We don't know if they're hostile, but I want you guys, I want you both to be ready. Everybody back up and secure and secure the, the entrance here. Lieutenant, permission to uh, set my phaser to kill? Not yet. I was asking Lieutenant Tabby, but you too, I guess. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, not yet. We don't know if they are, if they're hostile. Right, okay. Maximum stun. Fair. Um, yeah, I want to be a little bit ahead of everyone mm -hmm. so that I'd be the first one to interact with the, um, the two coming. With all due respect, Commander, I think you should step behind me just slightly. I appreciate it, but if this turns out to be a folly on my part, I'll uh, I'll I'll suffer the consequences here. <laughs> uh, completely ignoring the fact that there's life signs approaching, I'm going to start trying to examine tech and see what's going on with uh, like what tech technology level we're dealing with. Okay. Fair. Uh, why don't you roll me a uh, insight engineering difficulty of three? And if you have Xenotech or Alien Tech or anything like that, that would definitely apply as a focus. Sure don't. Uh, can I have a momentum for extra dice, please? Yeah. Three successes. Hey. Very nice. So uh, it's pretty much what you already were expecting. This is... Uh, if I had to put it in years, this is somewhere on the order of about 100 to 200 years ahead of what the Federation has. But uh, what's really important is uh, Crawl's sort of uh, motion detector, or how I'm flavoring it anyway. Uh, his tricorder does one of those things where as the life forms get closer and closer and closer, it starts beeping like, mm -hmm. beep, beep, beep. like it gets more mm -hmm. rapid and rapid. Mm -hmm. And eventually, it's almost like a constant noise. But you look up, and the life forms are supposedly right on top of you, but you see and hear nothing. I don't like this. The tricorder says they're there. right here. What is the chances that this is a sensor error? Uh, I'm going to hold the tricorder out to totally up. Can you take oh, a no, look at this? The ensign is very good at sensor diagnostics. <laughs> ensign, recalibrate the commander's sensors on his tricorder. Fine, give it to me. And I <laughs> just hand it over. Yeah. And yeah, I that thing's it. working fine. Th this is fine. They're coming. Um, at this point, <laughs> um, yeah, I would this like says to... they're here. <laughs> I, I at this point I would like to uh, use um, my joined talent to take uh survival as a focus it's a good thing too because uh, now i need everybody to do me a fitness security difficulty of two uh and for the record uh i'm pulling on inala leob's memories who served in starfleet during the dominion war noted Whoa. um okay uh, would uh would composure be a focus here for jaro yes would etiquette be a focus? <laughs> no, no. Etiquette, no. And that is sorry. an awesome focus, and though. Well, then, what I have failed. Uh, so you, the security, gotcha. Yeah, Never fitness mind. security. Escape and avoidance. I'll give, it, I'll give you escape and avoidance. I'll give it to you. And survival? Uh, and survival, yeah. Ooh, All right, so let's, 
<laughs> All right, okay. so that's due, mo that's due momentum. Yeah, so I'm seeing that. actually a total of three across everything, but I'm also seeing cool. that Leob and Tuleop fail. Yep. So, yeah. Game Radish had a complication. Can I you... spend a momentum to reroll that zero? Please? Well, it, if it was challenged, I see yes, but you can't because it's it's uh, it's a normal D20, unfortunately. I cry. But uh, what I would say <laughs> right, you could do with Bradish is this is an activation, so you could give him something. And uh, while you're dealing with that, uh, so those of you that failed, Leob and Tolea, it's almost as if something has punched you in the gut and the wind is immediately knocked out of you. But it's not one of those things where there's actual impulse behind the strike. So you are sort of just staying in the same position when your gut depresses and the air literally is pushed out of your uh, mouth. And I need you guys to take three stress of damage. Bradish, your complication is that your front of your helmet goes dark. You... As in, you can't see out of it, people can't see into it. Commander, I can't see a thing! Where are they? And he starts like moving around. All right. Can I, based on seeing what happened to um, happened to delay up, mm -hmm. uh, can I sort of guess the angle from which this came from, from this force came from? I'll give you a choice. You can either give me one momentum to ask the question, or you can roll a insight in a security to determine that. Do you mind me spending this momentum? Not at all. Right, go cool. ahead. Yeah, I'll spend the momentum then to ask that question. So it's almost as if someone was almost right up on top of him, and it came from a larger creature, is what I would say. All right, I want to target there and 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 do a phaser shot. All right, go ahead and roll me a control security difficulty of three. All right. Can I? Hmm. I'm actually going to spend my determination on this, maybe. Okay. Um, I'm, I want to use always prepared, always vigilant. Okay. Uh, as my, so that will give me two successes, right? So I only, mm -hmm. then I would only roll 1d20. Well, no, you still roll your 2d20. You just need only one success. Okay, cool. Perfect. Sorry, I haven't done this before. You're fine. Don't worry about it. Um, so it's a control security? Yep. Got it. Very nice. That's five successes, which means you're now capped on momentum. Very nice. So let's see, you have a security of five. So go ahead and roll me eight challenge die because you're using a type two phaser. All right. Uh, let me ask this because I guess you would have been able to charge. Uh, what would you like to do with your charge effect? Would you like to add vicious one area piercing? Um, I'll do, I'll do vicious one. All right. So that is a grand total of nine successes on the challenge die. So Jaro, you look at, uh, you look at to layup, you get a feel for where this thing is, if it's real and you point your phaser at it and, uh, sort of press, depress the button and an orange phaser lance, uh, comes out of the phaser and strikes a spot right in front of Tuleup. And immediately what happens is everybody sees what is essentially a writhing mass of tentacles and almost like a mollusk and an octopus had a love child. And then that love child read up on Cthulhu and started to get really into it. Uh, it's not something that you want to see is what I'm getting at. But okay. this, this mass of tentacles and writhing flesh just sort of comes into being and drops to the floor of the station motionless. I immediately pull up my tricorder and start scanning it. 
I'm going to spend two threat that your tricorder, when you pull it out, is broken. Uh, can I attempt to repair? You certainly could. My only question is, what are you repairing it with? Well, what's wrong with it? <laughs> Let's just say that punch to the gut, someone punched the tricorder. Okay. Um, so I sort of struggle back onto my feet, look at my tricorder. Amanda, uh, to lay up, Leo, uh, what's your status? My status well, is that I've got a uh, bruised everything. Uh, my tricorder status is that it's cracked. Can I borrow one of yours? I'll, I'll hand you mine. There is oxygen in my lungs again, so that is nice. So I've got a working tricorder, and now I go to scan the tentacle uh, beast. All right. And since we had potentially two of these things, uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to set my phaser, and I'm going to blast the ceiling <laughs> and have it rain down like particles across the across the all of us, so that potentially the object in question would be outlined with these little particles. Okay, I think I see what you're going for there. Uh, I'll get to you in a moment, Leo. But let's handle this because this could be more important. Uh, Tavi, I need you to roll me a control security difficulty of three. And, uh, of course, I think you, you have handheld energy weapons, so that would apply as a focus. And Bradish, yeah, you're, you're still in the dark. Gotta use, uh, three momentum. All right. Wow. Oh, look wow. at that. That's that's impressive. That is six successes, which means you get that three momentum right back. And uh, <laughs> yeah, <on> Tommy, <laughs> uh, since you have a type three, you may roll nine challenge die. All right. So you uh, sort of angle your phaser up so that the blast, when it ricochets off the ceiling, will sort of cascade down across the area. Uh, but with your skilled sort of reflexes that you honed on the Fenrir, you do it in such a way that it won't actually hit the away team. And when you do, uh, sure enough, when you fire and the orange sort of beam of light uh, sort of dissipates over the area, the other thing, whatever the hell it is, is not only outlined, but it does sort of come into being. Again, it sort of becomes visual to all of you. However... The key difference is this time, this one doesn't go down. This one is still standing. So we're going to enter into a little bit of structured combat here. Uh, since you guys just went, the creature is going to go. And um, tell you what, to make this fair, I'm going to roll a d6. Top roll, one to three, going left to right. Second row, four to six, again, left to right. And whoever I roll is the unlucky recipient of a melee attack. All right. Well, that is going to be number four, which uh, apparently is the ensign. Great. All right. So, uh, Leo, I need you to roll me a daring security difficulty of one, please. Getting excited would you for say, you. <laughs> would you say the ensign is within close range of me? I would say so, yes. Uh, can I use close protection? You can. Just remind me what it does. Uh, it will increase the difficulty by one because the guy's going to have a rat in his way. I like it. I like it a lot. All right. So, yeah, uh, Leo, you're stolen a daring security one. When I roll, I'm at a difficulty of two. And I am using my survival focus. Mm hmm. Oh, oh dear. Oh, that's oh, no. not good. <laughs> oh, dear. All right, which means all I need is literally one success on this uh, to succeed at hitting you. Let's you see. You know, it's in the emergency exit is not forgotten. I'm just. Oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I get the one success. So I think what I want to have happen here is that the uh, Lovecraftian horror sort of ensnares you, Leo, and doesn't crush you but snaps your tethers back to the Matahari, then hurls you out of the porthole so that you go flying into empty space 
I immediately hit the calm, uh, the calm button on my EVA suit and, uh, uh, this is Ensign Leob. Uh, I've been evacuated from the from the uh, station. I needed immediate extract. Bridge, you only get the first part of that because I'm spending two threat. Your communication cuts out. So which part did I get? You got the bridge. This is nothing. Ensign, come in. Ensign. Science, get a lock on Ensign Leob. Where is he? Uh, floating out in empty space, sir. Do you want me to beam him over? Or... Get him back on the ship. Do you want him here, decon? Bring him to decon. Captain 2, first officer, what the hell's going on over there? Why is Leo floating through space? Hostiles, Captain. And then, uh, uh, we're still dealing with one. Little busy. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I would uh, uh, suggest some rudimentary training and hand to hand. All right. So it is the player's turn. So Tavi, you've already gone this round technically. Uh, same with you, Jaro. So, and Leo, I guess you haven't been beamed away yet. So I guess you could kind of do like a heroic shot with your own phaser if you really wanted to. Do it. Uh, otherwise, it would be uh, Bradish or Prawl or Talea. Uh, I'll I'll take a heroic see. shot. <laughs> All right. So this is going to be a control security difficulty of four. I mean, yeah, I believe. Where he shoots the XO. <laughs> yeah, and that's the complication. Do it. If... Um, okay. Uh, no, I, I, don't, I don't think even survival is an applicable focus. For yeah, this. no, unfortunately yeah. not for this one. I was going to say. You spend determination if you really want to. Take this, take this guy down. Uh, no, let just... me punch him. I want to punch him. <laughs> uh, let's just take the shot. All right. Oh, two successes. Only two. So, uh, you know, you pull out your uh, your phaser and you sort of try to aim down the sights, but you're spiraling through space at this point. So when you actually hit the the uh, the button. It kind of does one of those funny things where it's just sort of like a laser light show where the phaser beam just sort of lances out and you know you're you're just sort of putting on a light show unfortunately. The uh the the rational part of me or the embarrassed part of me says that that's just me trying to give my position away to the ship. I mean it's good justification. They'll definitely see a phaser fire, that's for sure. All right. Uh so that's the player's turn. Uh does Bradish have quick to action? Actually, Prawl, don't you have quick to action? I have, I have that. Jaro has quick to action, yeah, which means yeah. you guys can go again. Let me punch right. it. Let me punch it. Punch it. Go punch it. All, All right, right. So Talea, punching it. Punch it. I need you uh, to roll me a daring security difficulty of one. Excellent. I have a focus in hand-to-hand -hand combat, and I also have the talent, the uh, Rigelian talent of... Uh, exosex, which means uh, whenever attempting a task using fitness or daring, roll one additional d20 and gain a bonus momentum. Very nice. That was daring security, yes? Mm -hmm. All right, four <laughs> successes. I'm not even, yeah, I'm not. Well, I guess I still need to roll because there's a chance of complication. Uh, okay, they didn't complicate. But yeah, so you square up. You go up to this uh, tentacle mass and uh, right jab, left jab, uppercut. Shoryuken. Uh Uppercut. Let's uppercut him. All right. <laughs> Try to get uh, under the under the mollusk shell. Just <laughs> Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll me. Uh, let's see. Uh, do you have mean right hook? I do. Well, uh, that is going to be a four challenge die with a vicious one tacked onto it. And that is enough. <laughs> I'm going to flavor it this way, that when you uh, uppercut it, you do so in a way that sends the creature flying out into space. And I feel like I'm picking on the ensign, but I swear I'm not doing this on purpose. When you uppercut it, the uh, the creature goes flying out into space. And ensign, you, you're still sort of spinning around, firing off your phaser wildly. And you actually end up hitting the creature again. And what happens is the creature 
and you just sort of drift out into space, like apart from one another. But uh, right about the time uh, that combat dies down, uh, Leo, you feel the uh, hum of a transporter and you rematerialize in the decon chambers of the Matahari. And that's where we're going to take our 10 minute break. So we will be back in 10 minutes, everybody. Stick around.
right, and welcome back to the second part of session 10 of Mata Hurry. If you're uh, just tuning in, the uh, away team just managed to defend themselves from cloaked, hidden, invisible, tentacle horror monsters. They uh, dispatched two of them and are uh, just now uh, sort of getting their bearings again. Uh, let's see, Leo, I'm just going to sort of put you over here to symbolize that you're not currently with the rest <laughs> of the away team. Yeah, that seems accurate. Uh, but the rest of you, you've got one right in front of you, uh, on the deck plate of this station, the Sterilic station. Yep. While the rest of the team is checking that out, I'll report to the captain. So okay. like away team to bridge. This is the captain. We were assaulted by uh, two creatures. Um, they don't seem to be intelligent life forms. They assaulted us just as we were entering the uh, entering the craft. Are you presently in danger? Uh, I think that we've secured the area. We also know uh, we know when the life pro forms approach us. It's just that they are invisible to our sight until we engage in combat with them. What do you plan to do moving forward, Jaro? Well, as we entered, we were greeted by um, a etching in human blood telling us to leave. I'm, uh, I'm hesitant to continue because this is a hard battle, but if there's if there's people in there who need our help, I don't want to abandon them either. As I said, and I've said to you many times, I trust you. Keep the crew alive. If you think that there is more danger than's worth it, you get back to the ship right away. Understood? Understood. Thank you. Connor and as I transport onto the decontamination deck, I immediately pull off my helmet and start throwing up from the G-force that I was experiencing out mm -hmm. there um yeah i checked danny bradish's helmet to make sure that it was just the polarization being initiated and then i de-initialized the polarization bradish you controls. can see again thanks commander i i wait thanks commander there it is all right thanks commander Whew, that was scary so what i miss i heard phase of fire uh well uh your commander shot one of the creatures. Dear God, what is that? It's like a thing of nightmares. That's uh, it's like calamari uh, to me. Exactly what I was hoping to find out. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Prowl, um, could you do a scan see if this matches anything uh, in our database? I'll take a look and see what I can figure out with this thing. All right. Crawl, I need you to roll me a Reason Medicine, difficulty of three. I'm going to use three momentum for two more dice. All right. Because medicine is not my strong point. I've never had more confidence in you than I do right now. Investigation? Yeah. Sorry, I'm a little distracted. They apparently have a bonfire going now. That's safe. Oh, dear. Where do you live again? What state? I'm in Virginia, so they definitely shouldn't be doing that. Yikes. All right. Uh, but hey, three successes. Uh, so you get the three you need. Prawl, if I had to qualify it in a way that would... Not that you would understand, but in a way that would make most sense... And this is if someone were to take an octopus or a squid or some mollusk or something to that effect from Earth and then run it through evolutionary uh, chains for about another 10,000, 20,000 years. Maybe longer than that. Maybe that's Maybe that's being too generous with the years. But basically, these are more advanced or further down the chain in the evolutionary scale of some form of earth aquatic animal. All right. Commander, uh, best way I can think of putting this, 
You know our run-in with the Voth a few months ago. Yes. Instead of dinosaurs, take sea creatures, but n- as far as I know, not as advanced technologically. Well, the technology I'm seeing in this, even in just this room, is about 100 to 200 years more advanced than our own. I'm not sure this is theirs. Hmm. Commander Torleya, you tend to be a little less cautious than me. Uh, how are you feeling about uh, continuing, continuing onwards uh, to investigate? I think with the measures we have already taken to protect ourselves, uh, we are still within reasonable tolerances to continue to explore, especially considering what we consider to be a, a distress call, having been sounded. Commander, uh, with, with regard to that distress call, are we able to get a signal on it? Because with all due respect, I'd like to find out what's going on and get the fuck out of here. Fair enough. We'll head directly to the source of the call as quickly as possible. Um, Lieutenant Tavi, please monitor the life signs and let us know if uh, we'll be walking in on any life signs or if any are approaching. I pick up Lilb's tricorder, which he dropped when he was punched out of the window, Mm -hmm. and uh, I wire it so that I have his data on my tricorder so that I can continue to track the source of the signal. All right. Speaking of the ensign, at this point, he's probably done throwing up. I mean, probably. Who knows how much he had for lunch. Uh, do you want him to beam back over? Uh, I'm ready, Commander. I'm ready. Let's go. I'm ready. Are you absolutely sure you took it pretty hard over? Harder than any of us. Yeah, well, uh, it's a it's a talent. Um, yeah, I'm ready. Let's do it. All right. Transport me back. Let's go yeah. bridge to transporter room two. Send the ensign back to the entry entryway. Yes, sir. And sure enough, uh, moments later, Leo, you uh, rematerialize with the rest of the away team. Okay. okay, coming back here gives you so much street cred. It's amazing. Thank you. I've never been more honored to have a positive affirmation from a rodent. Is this uh, exciting enough for you, Enzid? Is what? Is this exciting enough for you? I know uh, you were getting bored. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, I was re- really dreaming of a de- uh, of a depressurized spacewalk. Well, uh, we're going to put, uh, I think, that bravery to the test. Let's head out. Yes, sir. All right. So again, we have a little narrative section where you guys begin advancing down the corridors of uh, debris and flotsam uh, with Tavi probably at the front with Bradish, uh, with Taleop, you working with Leo to track the life signs. And it's one of those things that based on your advanced warning uh, because of the tricorder, you're able to sort of steer away from some of the patrolling exploring life signs. Um, But eventually what happens is as you're sort of pushing debris away and you're moving through these corridors, you eventually see in front of you uh, a T intersection, actually not a T intersection, a plus intersection, a four way Um, ahead of you directly ahead of you is a almost a blinding set of lights that seems to open up into a larger space the corridors to your left and the right, if you were to go up and peek down either, uh, you would see that the left one just goes into pitch darkness. The right one uh, seems to curve up and out into the same sort of opening that you saw at ground level right ahead of you. Which one would go in the direction that my tricorder was telling us the signal came from? Either directly ahead or to the right. Commander, recommend we take a pause, try contacting the ship and confirm that they can make a transporter lock or that we even have communication with the ship. Fair. 
Uh, awaiting the bridge. Nothing. The... Oh. <laughs> of course. Well, if we were to press on here, we'd uh, we'd be on our own. Uh, the lamp goes over to Leob's uh, broken tether, pulls out some of the end of it, and then uses his, his phaser to, to weld it a little so that it's attached to the end of Look to, to that this portion of my tether. Mm-hmm. All right, and so now if I go, you go. Or if you go, you go about halfway and then you're stuck here until I go. I'm happy to be attached to you, Commander. You know, they say to boldly go. Yeah. My uh my initial instinct is to is to press on straight ahead between uh, all right, turn into pitch darkness um, in a horror game, but uh, what what does everyone else think? We have flashlights, don't we? You do. Mm-hmm. But the commander said, press on into, into the bright light. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, yeah. How many lights would you say there are? Are there four <laughs> lights? No, there's five, damn it. There's always been five dying right now <laughs> i say i say we send the security chief first oh yeah i'm good with that danny and, would uh, like to go with tavi tavi enters uh uh rat ninja mode mm. is that one of those things where you do that comical thing where like you start doing combat rolls and like sneaking <laughs> along the wall and oh yeah all right so tavi you of course ninja rat up to the opening and Bradish, you're like one or two steps behind him. What you see when your eyes adjust past the light and you can see into the larger space, what you're seeing is that you are in the center or about mid level of this egg shaped space that every single surface, the walls, the ceiling, everything is lined with what look to be pods of some sort. Uh, They're vaguely coffin-shaped, but you look at one of the nearest ones, there's something in there. It's hard Uh, to tell. The pods have a semi-opaque surface to them, but you see something moving in there. uh, Commander, I think we uh, might have uh, stasis pods or something like that in here i think we need the ensign i'll uh, i'll come take a look yeah let's all head in nope 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 nope, nope. <laughs> so you all come out on what is this essentially balcony uh looking out at this incubator stasis room you really don't know but uh for flavor uh when you sort of look up and around if you do look up to your right there's another balcony maybe about 90 or so feet up and to the right. Well, I'm going to take a scan of uh, the closest possible pod. All right. Reason medicine, difficulty of three. And Toby's keeping an eye on the room, just making sure that, you know, nothing's coming out of nowhere. All right. Just for kicks. Um, D- just, just just trying this out cloning technology does that uh does that, that would actually apply here yeah okay that's great uh that's you want to momentum too oh yeah, uh yeah mm. i'll let it happen i'll let it happen if you want to momentum, right. okay. go ahead uh so what uh, what did it say insight medicine so i'll just roll an extra one okay on that All right, so uh, that's only two. Uh, I'll tell you what, I will offer this. Uh, you may succeed at a cost, but the cost is going to be a complication. Oh, was I being assisted by sensors? No, 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 no because the, the ship isn't helping you here. Okay, cool. Nope. Yeah, would you, would you be okay with succeeding with a complication? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So, uh, good news. Good news. Well, I guess it's not really good news, but 
you are reading human life signs in all of these pods. The complication is that you start to see that they are clones. And I'm pausing for dramatic effect because you sort of stare at your tricorder. That can't be right. Because if that's right, you're in those pods. The away team is in those pods. The crew of the Matahari is in those pods. But only the human members, or are we just talking humanoids? Human-ish. As in, if you were to take the... And this is sort of the, this is the nerdy part of me. If you remember the precursor race, or if you didn't know, there's the the precursor yeah. race way way long ago in the Milky Way history. Sort of did that sort of building blocks of life. That's why all the aliens in Star Trek look like one another. What mm-hmm. I'm saying is some part of that, whatever that base humanoid element is, that's what you're seeing. So you're not seeing Trill, but you're seeing what would happen if you took that sort of base building block out of the trill right okay uh commander um we're looking at cloned ionians cloned that's an ancient race right it is the ancient race commander it's the one that is the progenitor of all of our races Maybe even uh, Ratso over here. It, 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 it's it's everyone, and these pods are filled with them. Every single one has a, an Ionian in it. All right, there's there's something telling me that there's there's something you're concerned about here, uh... sir. If this is an Ionian ship, then it has to be a million years old, perhaps. Then, so point of clarification, do we mean Ionian or Iconian? Because there is a difference. I can't remember which one's which. Okay, I think you mean Iconian because they are Iconians. the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Iconians and then, yeah, the Iconians and they had the gateways to... Yeah, 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 that's the Iconians, yeah. Carry on. Yeah, the ancient precursors, gateways. Yeah, mm-hmm. so if this is an Iconian ship, this is million years old, possibly. We, we would have... This is the greatest scientific discovery possibly since the Bajoran wormhole. Well, uh, I'd agree. I mean, we have to secure this ship and secure these people if at all possible. They're now alive, you... Commander. They're all alive. Now that you know that uh, that there there's Iconian life signs on board, could you differentiate and uh, and figure out how many of this other species, the species that attacked us, is present? I'll see. Uh, is there any kind of interface that I can try to connect my tricorder to um, around me? Any kind of computer panel? Um, initially, I would say that there isn't, but I'm looking at your momentum pool. You do have the two momentum. You could spend uh, those two momentum to create the advantage that there is one. Do it, do it, do it. Yeah, let's, uh, let's find a panel. All right. So uh, you create the advantage. One of the things I love about Star Trek Adventures is you guys can mess with the scene just like I can. So yeah, uh, all this time there's been uh, at the center of the balcony, there's a raised dais, uh, almost like a, a Sheikah slate like you might find in Breath of the Wild where there's just sort of like a depression in it with uh, glowing sort of lines streaming off of it, um, which your tricorder is actually very easily able to interface with. Um, my question is, what are you looking for in particular? I want to see if they, if I can interface with the, sh- with the systems to figure out what the other life forms on this ship are. Okay. Uh, this is going to be a control security, I think, because there is some level of security system here. Uh, this might be something that Prawl helps with. This might be something that Tavi helps with. Uh, I'm going to say the difficulty on this is a four and you'd be doing a control and a security on this and you may have Bobby up to can one take assist. the lead. Yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, take also, the lead. Co- Lieutenant Commander, Anson? can you help me with this? Anson, can you uh, scooch over like this way? Sure. Hey. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> Mr. Tavi, would you like a boost? You know, I would take offense to that, but yeah, sure. Uh, Talaib will take a knee and then like put his knee out like he would if, so that he can step up onto it and form that ledge. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, you want us there. All right. So yeah, control security and who are you getting to assist you? Oh, the Ensign assist. All right. Because, you know, the Ensign is really, uh, you know, wanting to find some answers. <laughs> Um, and I'll use anthropology as a focus. Yeah, that would I'm definitely gonna, apply here. I'm going to spend a determination. Okay. And the value I'm uh, tapping here is a mouse is small and can go unnoticed, but there is no limit to what a brave heart and fearless spirit can achieve. Yeah. I love him. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so no help from the ensign, unfortunately. I don't, ass I don't uh, assume power systems would help me. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? In a strange way, I think power systems would help you here. Just, just I, I have a hunch. <laughs> okay, and uh, I'm going to give you two threat for another die. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Let's get wild. <laughs> All right. That is five successes, which means wow. you get uh, two momentum back by my, or was it one momentum back? by One my momentum count? back. One, yeah. yeah. So sort of to demystify a little bit, the tentacle creatures, whatever they are, now that you're looking at this console and you're looking at the data it's feeding, if I had to make a comparison, whoever's running this facility or used to run it anyway, they sort of use these creatures as you might use white blood cells in an immune system. So they, um, they attack invaders, infections, things of that nature. As so for, they're security. I mean, that... They're basically security, yeah. The other thing that you're noticing is that the Iconians that are supposedly in these pods, there's maybe about 3,000 of them that are recoverable. The other life signs that you're detecting, because again, I did say there were 20,000, mm -hmm. the other life signs you're detecting are either in lower life forms or are basically made up of the antibodies of the station. So, uh, sir, this is complicated, but it, it, it seems like the tentacle creatures we encounter are some kind of defense system to defend against us coming into this station. Um, and not all of the life signs here are Iconians after all. Some of them are lower life forms and some of them are more of these defenders. Do you have access to the ship's historical logs? Could you track what happened, what resulted in uh, the distress signal and the message we saw? I could try. All right, now this is going to be probably the make or break of the session. This is going to be a control and a science. The difficulty will be a five. And because I have threat remaining, I'm going to spend all of it. Complication range is 16 to 20. Oh, oh you sly devil. Uh, how much Jeez. momentum do we have floating around right now? You got one. Only one. one. Well, if only someone who knew how to use computers were around. Oh, <laughs> oh what a sad time this is. <laughs> Is that um, your hint to lay up? Is, is that your hint? Just gonna look over at, at Commander Commander to lay up. If if you if you want in on this. <laughs> well, what do you suggest, Commander? Well, there are several things I could suggest, but I have yet to even see the systems. Science appears to be in control today, so I have not uh, looked. <laughs> So what I would say to layup is if you do this, it's a control engineering. 
I think, uh, you know, Punchy McPuncherson should uh, check this out. Punchy McPuncherson, nice. Okay. Uh, you know, because yeah. he knocked out a big old antibody body thing. And the only thing he've really accomplished is going out at airlock. Well, let's be fair to the end. He you know what? Fine. The and I just I put the, I put the tricorder <laughs> down on the uh, on the dais. Please go ahead. Brad, so I want to be very clear laughing. about what you just did. You put the tricorder in the depression. Is that correct? Yeah. All right. So what oh, happens no. is the moment you put it in the depression, everything begins to shake. Like the oh, entire that's not good. the entire structure begins to shake. And almost like the egg cracking open, a seam begins to form in the shell, quote unquote, of the space. And it opens up to the space itself. So back on the Matahuri, you see the, the station itself sort of opening up, uh, almost like a lotus or like a flower. And the pods begin launching out into space one by one. Now, you guys could attempt to stop this launching process, but if you don't, it's probably going to launch all those Iconians out into deep space. I try taking the tricorder off of the depression. It's stuck. <laughs> I shoulder the ensign out of the wing and begin to interface <laughs> with the system. All right, so now will... the situation has changed. To stop this, it's a daring engineering. Mm -hmm. Still a difficulty of five, still a 16 to 20 complication. I'm going to adjust the, I'm not going to try and stop the system the, from shooting the pods. What I am going to try and do is have the station adjust its uh, trajectory. So that instead of firing them out into deep space, it's going to fire them into a um, orbit of the dead planet. So that essentially the Matahari can just go pick them up later. Uh, okay. So essentially I'm not going to try and stop anything. I just want to turn the station a little. All right. Uh, and I'm going to use my determination of the key to success can often be thinking on your feet Fair. For, two, um, for two successes, for a dice with two successes to start with. Mm -hmm. uh, can I use my computer's focus here? I'd give it to you, yeah. Spend the momentum. Um, and can I give you... <laughs> what's, the, what's the difficulty here? Five. Okay, can I give you? I've already got a dice. If I give you Do it. five, if I give you one four, if I give you four threat and spend that one momentum, I can have five dice. Yeah, you would have five total, but you roll four. Right. Yeah. So I'm rolling four. Worth it. And uh, I'll can I assist on that in a very oh shit oh shit I'm sorry commander commander I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'll let it happen. You may roll uh, daring science on your end. Sure. Yeah. All right. All right. Oh, so that's seven bam. successes with a complication. Can I use cloning technology as a focus again? Mm, unfortunately, not. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. I got nothing. Uh, let's go. All right. So that is right. eight successes, which means you have three momentum. So to lay up, you are able to reorient the station so that it is no longer firing into deep space. However, the complication, Captain O'Connor. Yes. Hello. You're having a good day. Just hanging out your with away cat. team is having fun. You've got your <laughs> cat there. Everything's going great. When all of a sudden the station opens up, begins firing off pods in the deep space. And before you can really start yelling at anyone, the station orients itself so that it's pointing at the Matahari. And suddenly the Matahari, a bunch of collision warnings, a bunch of alarms start going off. You've got a bunch of pods sticking out of your ship now. I, uh, damage report. Well, sir, we have um, a bunch of life pods stuck in us. Let's start removing them. Just strafed across the hall. Yeah, just strafed across the hall. Just like, oops, oops, oops. <laughs> Captain to the away team. Well, now that the station has opened up, you do get a line through. Commander Jaro here. 
Commander, can you please explain to me why the station just fired upon the Matahari? We have several pods sticking out of the hull. We were attempting to peacefully recover uh, survivors of an ancient race when uh, we accidentally initiated the station's own ejection protocols. Um, Commander Talaev used some quick thinking to redirect the, the pods, but unfortunately, some of them were aimed directly at the ship. I'm sorry. So I'm going to be mad at him, not you, is what you're telling me, correct? Uh, well, that's the great thing about uh, having two commanders now. I get to share the, the blame with my equally ranked I thought the I thought the polarization of the ionic disparity modulator on the shields would cause them to ricochet. I didn't really consider their velocity after ejection. Live and learn, Commander. Live and learn. Also, Captain, uh, I, I believe I may have some responsibility to hold here. Uh, oh, Ensign, uh, it is the responsibility of a commanding officer to take the fall for his uh, subordinates. So you shut your hole. <laughs> <laughs> Captain O'Connor actually chuckles at that one. Well, I'm just glad to hear that everyone's all right. We're beginning to remove the pods from the hall. Please just keep me abreast of any more random flak firing missions you're on. Just be safe out there. O'Connor. On the plus out. side, we've got a communications backup. And we do have you to thank for that. See, everyone's okay. Yeah, the Edson's good at putting things into space. I'm spending two threat that right about now an antibody runs up from behind you and punts the Edson into space. <laughs> <laughs> and that is where we're going to end our session for today. Because <laughs> we, we, we had to end it on a high note there. <laughs> but yeah, what did you guys think? Was that uh, spooky enough for your uh, your little Halloween episode? That was really fun. Was quite that was quite really creepy. Fun. Anytime you have like, Lovecraftian horrors, it's always like, oh, well... Something that, you know, man was never meant to perceive. Mm -hmm. uh, that's always pretty creepy. Yeah, I thought it was As really good. As a Call good. of Cthulhu player myself and a GM for that, I love it. As soon as I heard tentacles, I was like, ah, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something, uh, if you don't know me, like, uh, at as uh, Tavi can attest to, we had uh, Atlic Nacha on the Fenrir game. So I love throwing in little love crafting things here and there. Right on. But yeah, uh, yeah, it sounds like everybody had fun. Uh, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to run the credits, um, but we need to pick somebody to raid uh, before I run the credits. So let me take a look here and find somebody to raid. Uh, let's see. I am going to send you over to... Let's send you to Notori on this one. All right. And so. Thanks, everybody, for watching us. Yeah, we had a good turnout yeah. tonight. Uh, thank you all so much for uh, tuning in. But also, yeah. thanks to the two new players. Really glad to have you guys in. Really enjoyed playing with you, and I loved the dynamics tonight. It was really fun. So pretty good. Thank you. Yeah, it, it was. It's it's been really fun going from captain in the other game to shit eating ensign in this game. <laughs> it gets uh, punted out into space. Yeah, yeah. Just gets, that apparently is the thing now. <laughs> just, oh, I need to spend my last two threat. Might as well shit kick the ensign. <laughs> I'm, I'm starting to think that like science officer on this ship is going to be a, like a cursed position <laughs> because like, Jensen had the raw end of it too where it's like, every yeah. All right, I'm going to run the credits. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good night, everybody. Thanks, guys.